Hello and welcome to the Concept Artist Podcast, interviewing up-and-coming concept artists to learn what it's like entering the industry today. Emily Vaccarini francis is a concept artist currently working with Trent at Aquatic Moon. In her professional work, she has produced some delightful board icon and card back concepts for Legends of Terra. Looking through her portfolio, it's easy to get lost in the wonderland of spectacular environment concepts. Welcome to the show, Emily. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on today. As a first initial question, what would you say sets apart a concept artist from something like an illustrator or a matte painter? Uh, I would say like finished product and cleanliness, like for an illustrator and an illustrator and um, a matte painter. I guess you get to like that very polished product that's very presentable. That's probably gonna make it in the game or make it in the final product, you know, whereas the concept artists, we're, we're on the dirt road. Like we're figuring things out and we're doing a thousand sketches. We're, we're redoing things. We're transforming things. We're editing a lot. We're doing the research, like the research part, the, the rough research, I think, like f- figuring out what it's going to look like. That would be the, the main difference for me. Like definitely like the, yeah, like final product, the presentable product versus the one that maybe nobody should see because it's 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 a rough road a rough road to get there when it comes to your own art where do you find the most valuable feedback for improvement would you say the team that you work with or have you really begun to cultivate an online group that you draw from right now i mean the the feedback from trent canuga is uh invaluable like you know i could just as far as like work stuff whatever he says it's like duh but yes of course that that's what i should do and then the feedback from riot since that's the client we're working it right now like the the paint overs from the riot artists and stuff is just is nothing better and then uh, as far as like personal stuff and and like personal work i would say like yeah like online online people at first 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 when i started I don't know if it still exists, but it had that that uh, website called the uh, conceptart.org, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, it was brutal. Like you would go in there and you had to be scared. Like you would post <laughs> something and like they were not polite. They were rough about it. You know, like the the sandwich feedback where they tell you like you should like give a compliment and yeah. then you do the critique and then you you give another compliment. No, it was just a slap in the face every time and it it was good you know like it was just like okay it set you straight like okay i did wrong i'm gonna like go back to it and then you would post it again and people were brutal again but it was good yeah it helped me evolve a lot oof really really build a thick skin yeah exactly exactly i don't know if it still exists though i haven't been on it in a long time and then aside from that you just online presence and you start chatting with people and you find people that like your stuff and that are willing to like give you feedback or like a fresh pair of eyes on things. Now that you have kind of set up where you go for feedback, when did you start focusing on building your portfolio? And did you turn to that feedback when you were building that portfolio? So I'm 36 now. I started seriously at 30 years old, like building something. I graduated at 25. I had some, you know, let's not talk about it type of years. And then 30 years old, I was like, okay, now I I have to be serious about this thing. So conceptart.org. I started doing a bunch of pieces. I started getting slapped in the face about it. And I started evolving. And I guess, yeah, 30 years old, started building that. I get feedback from online community and looking at other artists also a lot, comparing yeah, I guess that's how I, you know, you, it's, it's, you start building it, but the final portfolio did not include some of the early stuff that I thought would be included in the final portfolio, if I'm making any sense. No, no, I completely understand what you're saying. When you first started working with Trent, what did you have in your portfolio? I have not had much time to do anything new since I've been working with him because he keeps me busy. So pretty much what's in my portfolio now, uh, minus minus maybe like six, seven pieces is what I had in there. Yeah, pretty much my portfolio now minus the latest, like maybe two years. That was where my portfolio was. Wait, what I have now is what he saw, pretty much. Well, what what you have is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. <laughs> So when it comes to Aquatic Moon as a whole, how did you go about finding out about them? Was it 
Through social media or a listing or... YouTube. He has a, an awesome YouTube channel where he's, he does like short videos. That's why I liked about his videos too. They're like 12, 10, 12 minutes. And he's just like rough about it and honest. And he, he doesn't like sugarcoat it. So I was like, oh, I'm into you. I am into you a lot, sir. And uh, he draws while he does the video. So I guess you pick up like little techniques on what he does. At the same time, you listen to him and he's like setting you straight and stuff. And one day I was watching a video because I follow him on YouTube. And at the end of the video, he's like, hey, we're looking for new people. So that was like two years ago now. And uh, he, s he gave us like a, at the end of the video, he gave us an email to apply. I was like, oh, <laughs> so I wrote in and I, I remember like I, I, I wrote, wrote down like a corny, corny title, like a, a corny header for my, uh, for my email. I was like super pumped um, application or something like that. I was like, okay, let me do like a ridiculous title. So he, like the email stands out to him. And then after that, like I wrote down that I'm a big fan of him. I love what he does. I would love to work with him. I sent him a link to my um, CV, my resume. A uh, link to my portfolio, and a couple of hours later, he wrote back. I was like, no, I was on my butt, just like oh, so surprised. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he wrote back. I was like, no, no, I was not expecting it. You know, I just like I threw some seeds in the wind. And I was like, let's see where this goes. And um, that evening, I think, or like the next day, he had me. He had me like doing a test on like a, a gray box. Mm -hmm. And he liked what I did, and he was like, "Cool." And I, no, we hadn't. Did we have a phone interview before or after the gray box? I don't know. I think before, probably before. That makes more sense. He was like, you know, he asked me like, "How long have I been doing that? Why do I like to do that?" Like regular interview question. How comfortable am I with this? And ta da. -da. And yeah, <laughs> I was super, super, super nervous. I was like very nervous when we first started talking because I was like not expecting him to answer at all, like not ex expecting him to like anything I did. And he was like, yeah, I'm really interested in working with you. So I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. That's awesome. Yeah. That was the one. So that was really the kind of one and done application, huh? Yeah, it was. Because before that, I did a couple of stuff here and there. But like, yeah, that was that was the one that I sent in my it wasn't him contacting me. Like I sent him the my application pretty much and it was accepted. It had never happened before. What was the interview process like? You mentioned an art test. Did you guys have a chat beforehand or after? Beforehand, yes. Now that I remember, he called me and we had like an honest talk. You know, it was, it didn't feel much like an interview. He wanted to know where my head was at and my motivation level and just... Yeah, it was very, uh, very straightforward, like not stuffy or anything. Just he talked to me and I, we, we chatted. It was, it was pretty much a, a professional chat, let's call it. And after that, he made me do the, the test. It was a paid test and the test was for something I cannot talk about yet. Totally understand. But it was for a project. Yeah, it was a project that was ongoing. So he, he just, he, he let me jump into it and he was happy with it. He was like, hey. Let's, let's do this thing. It took like a couple of days and I was working with him. That is absolutely wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really cool experience. I'm so glad I went in and wrote the email. So yeah, you know, like big lesson, just like whenever somebody gives you an email to write to and to apply, just write in, just go for it. Exactly. You never know what can happen. Yep. And how long have you been working with him now? I said two years. I think it's going to make two years in January because I started. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I think, yeah, because I had my uh, work permit uh, delivered like uh, maybe on like January 1st or December 29th or something. And like the 4th or the 5th or something like that, I sent in the email and we started working together. Well, I started working for him, sorry. And did you have any expectations when you started going in to work with him? Or were you just excited for whatever came your way? Uh, well, I, I kind of saw what he works for, who he's worked for, so I had a little bit of expectation. I knew that he wasn't going to give me the good stuff right away, you know? But um, he did give me some pretty cool stuff to like, chew on right away. So I had oh, some... Yeah, 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 yeah. I had some expectation, but at the same time, yeah, I took it easy. I was just kind of on the moon 
about the fact that he was like, yeah, I like what you do. I want to work with you. I was like, oh, hell, <laughs> that's cool. So expectations, but no expectations at the same time. Just going with the flow and being happy about it, being thankful, grateful. And now that you are working at Aquatic Boon, what does your average day kind of look like? Well, I am a independent contractor for him. So it's a little bit of whatever, you know, I, I discipline myself to the fact that I'm putting in at least like seven hours, eight hours every day, of course. Um, but as long as, you know, my, my seven, eight hours could be a nine to five, but it could be, um, noon to, uh, noon to 8 PM. It's, it's just always making sure that I give him a full day's work and, you know, be consistent even. Also, he's like three hours behind me cause I'm in Florida. He's in California. So it's mm, true. Yeah. 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 So sometimes like I could be finishing at eight, 9 PM, but he's like, he's still in the thick of it. So it still works out. Just a regular day. I wake up. I make sure, like, I get ready as though I'm going to work, even if I work from home. Four hours in, a little break, four hours out. What would you say that meetings are kind of like? I take it then a lot of them are via Zoom or Slack, Discord, that sort of thing? On the phone. I have his phone number. He ah. just, we, yeah, we text or we call. Again, like, very, very light about it. No, no pressure. One of the major difficulties that I've seen with aspiring concept artists is not knowing what their value is within the industry. Would you be at all comfortable discussing your pay and benefits? Or... Yes. Yes? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So what has been your kind of average experience with that when it comes to pay, paid time off, health care, that sort of thing? That sort of thing does not happen for me because I'm an uh, intimate independent contractor. So I just, I get paid. I get paid hourly and I have to deal with the rest type of, type of business. Mm -hmm. As far as rates, maybe like deciding like what your rate should be and stuff. You mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. That, okay. That I can answer because I have no <laughs> benefits, no paid time off, no nothing like that. Well, I think as far as my rate, when I first started like getting jobs, like I panic like everybody else you're like am I gonna quote them too much and they're gonna say no am I gonna quote them too little and I'm gonna lose out so I just did a bunch of bunch of bunch of research when I first started I started at $25 an hour US dollars and it's strictly because I thought that it was the average online for a person in my position starting the type of work that I was gonna do aside from that you always have this self-calculating if if it's a job that you you know you're really going to enjoy doing like you might take a little pay cut if it's a job that you're like Oof, I'm only gonna do that one to like pay the rent this month like you you stand firm on your on the rate that you that you've decided yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I think that's that's my personal logic you know like I'll I'll do something if I know I'm really gonna enjoy doing it I'll I'll be easy about it but if if it's going to be hard or anything, like I'm not going to make it even harder on myself by not being properly compensated. And then uh, yeah. regu regularly, I just check online and I look at averages and like what's what's the norm for like other people at my level and my level of experience. And I go up every year just about. Yeah, I kind of give myself a little raise and uh, you know, stay, uh, we call it reasonable. I try to stay in the reasonable range. I'm not greedy. I don't have a very expensive life. I'm, life. I'm pretty frugal. So I just compensate myself well. I do the calculation to make sure I'm going to be able to pay my rent and my power, my internet, taxes at the end of the year, all of that. Take all this stuff into consideration. All the fun math that goes with it. Yes, 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 yes. Um, <laughs> but in the end, it's really like one plus one plus one plus one and you get to a result. You know? <laughs> It takes a little time, it gets a little annoying, but you have to do it just, you know, to have peace of mind. Oh yeah, definitely. Since you are an independent contractor, do you also work on things like commission pieces? Or is that not really what you like to spend your time doing? I will do it, like I said, if it's something that I'm super excited to work on, like, ooh, I cannot pass it, like a fairy tale castle and like a lush jungle okay yes yes i am all yours 
where you are currently residing, what is your cost of living like? And are you able to keep that balanced with your work as an independent contractor? Like, where? what is rent, transit? What is that like where you are? Uh, I'm in Florida. I'm north of Orlando. So it's... Um... If I round it up, I think I thought about it because you gave me the questions ahead. And I think like everything uh, between like rent, electricity, Wi-Fi, I'll phone, food, I probably like spend like $2,000 a month. Rent is going to be 900 power like 150 Then you have food and stuff like that. So I would round it up to $2,000 a month. Transit, there's no transit because I work at home. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do credit card. I don't do all that stuff. So I, I'm like I said, very frugal. So I keep things on the the low end. And then as far and then entertainment, I like to go out and eat and stuff like that. But yeah, in the end, I'm I'm a cheap date. Like I'm I'm I would say like yeah, two thousand dollars is what I spend every month on living happily and comfortably. That's good. What were some of the most common mistakes you found yourself making when you started creating professional concept art? Uh, I think that goes back to the first question you, you asked me about the difference between illustration, make painting, and concept art. I was all into like doing finished, clean, well, trying at least, uh, pieces, mm -hmm. pretty much doing illustrations. And then little by little, I kind of understood that, okay, you can show the work. You can show the, the ugly sketches and the research and all that good stuff. So I had to, yeah, like learn to... Learn to understand what really my job was because, yeah, you come out of school and school kind of taught you that you're an illustrator now when you're, you're really, you're really not. You're like a researcher and you're like a, you need to do, sorry, I can't find the words really. But yeah, pretty much my mistake was thinking that I was an illustrator rather than a concept artist and not showing my work and my capacity to research and develop and I do iterations and all that, all that good stuff. That seems to be a a pretty common one that I've heard yep. among artists. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to concept art itself, what do you think is the most exciting part of it? What's the thing that gets you really happy and excited to go to work? Uh, the really, definitely the, the rough part, like the early sketches and like doing tons of catch sketches and looking at a bunch of pictures and finding inspiration and finding new like design design language and new shapes and trying to like make the client happy like somehow you know like when when you give him like you give them like five pages of sketches and like they're looking at it like ah oh, ah oh, this is great ah oh, we love this we love that and you're like yes I did my job like it's <laughs> yeah 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 really like yeah the sketch part this the initial sketches and the initial research really gets me gets me going honestly <laughs> That is an exciting feeling. Yeah, 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 definitely. Just getting, hitting it, hitting the nail on the head. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also making the mistakes, you know, because like even you make mistakes, it's like, oh, you don't like that? Well, I put it to the side and it, it's mine now. I'll work on it on my own time. Exactly. Yeah. You mm -hmm. get to kind of keep it. Yes, totally. So when it comes to 3D, how do you see that being utilized in concept art? Do you like to use 3D in your workflow process, or are you more strictly 2D? I have used it once for an old project. I don't use it because I really, really enjoy sketching and I enjoy perspective a lot. Like, I really like to freehand perspective. It's one of my big pleasures when it comes to, like, research and drawing and stuff. But I think that it is awesome. I really think people should use it. It's a really great tool. When I was painting the gray boxes for the first game I worked on with Trent, it was it was a fun experience. It's very ab absolutely interesting tool. When I was in school, I studied it, you know, so I know a little bit of Blender. I know a little bit of 3D Max. If I need to like do something with it, I am able to do something with it. You should use it if it's gonna help you get the job done right, get the job the job done quickly, get you know like cleanly. I think it's a great tool. 3D, uh, what do you call it? They've been the uh, what that they've been doing the um, ta -ta -da, with the Oculus, where like you do the the sketching, the 3D sketching. Oh, uh, yes, 
the like the like VR sculpting. Yeah, the VR sculpting. This is excellent. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it because I have motion sickness and it scares me to death. But uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> I th- it's wonderful how much like it increases your possibility. Like you know, somebody who maybe doesn't have too much knowledge and perspective, it doesn't hold them back because sometimes you're very creative, but like. It's not fear that you're not going to be able to create just because, like, you don't know how to, like, you know, vanishing points and POV and one point and two point and three point perspective. Like, nah. You just open that 3D program and you just build that gray box and boom. Like, excellent tool. I love it. Oh, yeah. I think it definitely opens up a lot of doors for artists. Very true. So, would you say that in your own art, would you say that you have a style? of any kind? I think I do because people around me tell me that they recognize, that they would be able to recognize my my art if they saw it and they didn't know I did it or I didn't tell them I did it. So Mm -hmm. I think I have a little something, a little style going, yes. But at the same time, I don't see it because some, now maybe more because I've been working more consistently on like, on projects that call for it, I guess. But like before, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I have I've worked on stuff where, yeah, but like honestly, I don't know if I know that I have a style. I know my inspirations. I know what makes makes me vibrate. But I really like I love doing. I guess I have a style. I do have a style because I have like strong inspirations and what do you call it. Um, I'm losing my words. Sorry. Might I ask what your inspirations are? Uh, Asterix and Obelix. Uderzo, Uderzo? Oh, yes! Yes! Uderzo, Peyo, the Smurf, like that, that type of, those types of comic books, like really always. Um, yes! So that, yeah, definitely the, that, yeah, comic book, comic book artist of that, that era, like the Asterix and Obelix, the Spiru, I don't know if Spiru is something that you ever heard of. Uh, the I'm not sure I know that one, but I, I grew up reading the, uh, the Danish translations of Asterix and Obelix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like, yeah, Gaston Lagaffe, Asterix, that, yeah, that's my whole childhood. Like, my uh, my stepmom was a librarian, so I would go to France every summer and I would get to just read. <laughs> and that was oh, really fun. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But aside from that, I have like nowadays digital artists, uh, Nathan Fox, Trent, Trent, I love what Trent does. So I think I have like a Disney. I mean, I've always been just overjoyed by watching all the Disney movies and all the Disney cartoons. That's that's an obvious answer. Yeah, I like whimsical, chunky, swirly, happy colored, round, no angles type of art is, is my jam. Besides comics and Disney and such, are there any other sort of non-art related experiences that find their way into your creation process? I have, uh, since I'm a very, very little girl, like maybe like two or three years old, my, like my grandpa put a hammer and a saw in my hand. So I've always liked building stuff, even if I don't build anything pretty or, you know, any, like I, I am a little bit of a builder. I am a little bit of a, a sculptor because my mom does pottery and stuff like that. Used to it. Uh, oh, that's so cool though. Yeah. So I do have that uh, building in my head type of process. Like if I draw something... I build it in my head, like as though I could turn it around and hold it in my hand. Like if I design a landscape, I'll I'll close my eyes and I'll just like fly through it and see it from like different angles. So I, yeah, that's probably incredibly helpful for architecture design. Yes, it is. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, yes, yes. I really, it, it comes in handy. Um, aside from that, yeah, uh, but then it, it's kind of sort of is related to art, um, but. Other things that come in the process, reading, I guess reading, I guess, because I, as I, I read a book and I'm just like, there's a movie going on in my head, like I'm just imagining every scene, like one after the other. So, but then that still s- s- sticks to like the classical type of like inspiration you could get that everybody gets their inspiration from like watching movies and reading. And I'm an observer. Mm-hmm. Like I've always been like somebody who doesn't say much and I can just stay there and like analyze something for like very long period of, periods of time and it'll come back to me later like into a little flash of inspiration and I'll start drawing something that might not have anything to do with what I was looking at but 
the shape will inspire me, the negative space will inspire me, the yeah, that that's that sort of thing. I'm I'm very random. Very, very random. I like that though. It's a it's a very it makes for a very fun process. Mm-hmm. So how do you spend your time off of work? <laughs> um, I'll grab a sketchbook and I'll <laughs> I'll draw some more. But um aside from that I like doing some light gardening and I like fixing stuff and building little things and I like playing sports. Oh yeah? Like yeah, I really like being active. I I'll go rollerblading, I'll I'll play football, but not really football, you know, I'll go swimming. I used to surf. I don't really have the opportunity anymore. I really like being active. I grew up in the Caribbean. I pretty much grew up in a tree and on the seaside, so that's that I like I like eating, I like going out and like eating. I'm a big fan of breakfast. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. That sounds like a lot of fun to me, so <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Do you have a goal in mind for the future? Is there something with your art that's really driving you forward? The pleasure of doing the art itself is just still very present on a daily basis. I don't get tired of it. So as long as I'm allowed to make art and be creative and like it's uh, I'll be happy with it. Maybe at one point like I'll want a little more like maybe I know like some people I want point in their career they're looking forward to like doing a little bit of maybe like art direction or like being in charge of something or doing their own project um, right now I just I'll be very happy if I'm allowed to keep doing what I do it is I'm so grateful that I have the chance to do that the chance the yeah I guess you can say that that to, to, yeah to be able to make a living and out of being an artist like it's it's very wonderful i'm just creating wonderful things in my head constantly and i'm putting it on paper and it's it's or in, on the on the wacom like <laughs> in the computer and it's my job i was like it's just i don't think it could get much better than that i am super grateful to where my career is heading and headed and hopefully i just cross my cross my fingers that it, it stays like that Oh yeah, and I know I can definitely see the joy that you have for your art when looking at your pieces. Oh, that's good. I'm that's, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad it shows. Well, that is all the questions that I have for you today. So thank you so much again for coming out and taking the time to speak with us. It was good. It was it was awesome. It was short and sweet, but I know I'm a short talker, so it would be like that. <laughs> well, I hope you had a good time. It was it was really cool. It was really cool. I hope whatever I rambled on is going to help somebody or give them a little motivation or inspiration. And it was really good. Excellent first uh, experience with you. Thank you very much, Christine. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> While I still have you here, are there any platforms or projects that you're currently working on that you'd like to give a little shout out to? I was uh, working last year or the year before on a project with... Um, Andrew Matingly, I think he contacted me and he was like, hey, I'm trying to like revive this game from the 80s. It's a point and click. I love it. I would like to make it a more current project and everything. Like I'm going to invest all I have into it and then I'm going to see if I can get funding for it. And he, he really, he went in. He just, he gave everything and he paid us and he, he wrote the story. He wrote the game. He's a programmer, so that helps. Um... He built a platform for it and lo and behold like a couple of months ago he got contacted by a company that decided to um, fully fund him so he was really rewarded for his ballsy move and um, I'm not part of it very much anymore because I'm done with the concept art I've, but so once in a while I do some things for him um, but he's put together a, a technical team now they're onto doing the 3D and the animation and the rigging and putting everything into the game engine and it's really starting to look lovely and I know the game is going to be really awesome and yeah, that was... Well, that is super rad. I was very, very happy for him when the whole funding thing happened. Well, that's def that is really cool. I will definitely put in the link so others can check it out. I'll give you the, I'll give you the website. Oh, fantastic. Thank you.
All right. And if anyone's interested, are you currently open to your commissions? And if so, how should they contact you? I don't think right now I should be reasonable and I should not take on anything else that I, <laughs> I don't think that would be wise. So right now, no commissions. All right. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. It was very pleasant. And thank you everyone for listening. If you are a concept artist or no one who might be interested in coming on the show, please let me know and have a wonderful rest of your day. Well, thank you. I hope this was a good experience for you. Super good. I'm <laughs> very glad I did it. I hope I get you enough meat to uh, to put on the <laughs> on your plate and then, you know. Definitely. And I will be sending you over the initial edits and yeah. I guess that's all I have for now. Do you have any kind of questions now that it's finished? I was wondering what you did. Because I know, I guess, you obviously you do podcasts and you do interviews. But I, I know I, I saw that you're an artist as well. I am, yes. I'm also a freelancer. I currently do a lot of illustrations for people. Mm -hmm. But I... I would love to get a job as a concept artist, but I do a lot of illustrations at the moment uh, for commissions, and that's how I make my living, hmm. is drawing commissions for people. That's kind of how we all start about this, this thing a little bit, because yeah, my first job was illustration for some Brazilian school books, you know, so it's... <laughs> at one point, you, you somehow you end up working where you wanted to be working. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you, uh, what, what made you want to start doing interviews like that? Well, I guess because I had seen so many interviews for concept artists and illustrators on YouTube, but they were mainly ones from years and years back, but I hadn't heard any from concept artists that had really started working in the industry recently or semi-recently, mm. and I mm -hmm. really tried to dig and I couldn't find any, and mm. I wanted to know the opinions of people that were really in the thick of it now so i was like all right fine i'll do it myself <laughs> <laughs> that, that is cool that's really cool yeah you're right you're right because you have interviews of all the like super established guys like the ones that are untouchable they get paid like three thousand dollars a day when they work and things so yeah you can't really relate to their day's work because it's yeah they live in hawaii and yeah no no that is cool that's very smart thinking because you're you're very right it's hard to like dig up like you said, like people yeah. that you you can relate to. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good thinking, and I'm very glad I'm part of it. Oh, I'm glad. Well, I uh, wish you the best on your um, finding that concept art job or heading towards it at least. And uh, th thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much again. I really appreciate that you contacted me about it. I'm very, very happy. Thank you, and again, thank you so much for coming on today. This was awesome. All right, cool. You take care. You too. Have a great rest of your day. You as well. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.